What would a recruitment firm be like if it was actually run by Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street? Remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified every time we release a new video. And that way you won't miss out on any of the goodies. My name's Stephen Long and I was a salesperson and recruiter in the 80s and 90s. So, been there, done that. And let me tell you one thing, no recruitment firm is, was, ever has been or will be like the Wolf of Wall Street. And I'm just gonna explain why. And whoever speaks first loses. The late 80s uh, through to mid 90s were best described as the Wild West of sales. It was unbelievable though, I mean, just, uh, within a, a legal and uh, sort of business framework, not organized crime like the Wolf of Wall Street. I, you know, I remember working in a sales environment where we had um, a set of desks in a circle around a big column where you had a bell and scoreboards and all the rest of it. And we sat on the inside of this circle with the sales managers wandering down the outside. And if you're getting a mental image of this, it's like a John Wayne film where the, the cowboys have circled the wagons and the Native Americans are riding around on horses shooting arrows at them. That was kind of the environment. And um, in that same company, um, we, we used to be really buzzing and hammering during the week. And then all of us, we'd come in on a Monday and say, well, how was your week? And oh, it was horrible. I just had this screaming migraine all weekend. It was terrible. And we cracked it one day when we caught our sales director crumbling packets of Proplus, you know, the, the caffeine tablets, into the water fountain that we all made coffee from. So, um, yeah, not like the wolf, but, you know, I've had my experience of high pressure sales environments where, um, you know, you, you work in selling advertising sales and you can't have a chair until you made a deal. And then they'll take away your headset and you have to use a handset until you make a deal. I, I've been there, done that in those environments, but no recruitment firm has ever been like the wolf of Wall Street or will be like the wolf of Wall Street. Let me explain why in a little bit more detail. First thing is that um, if you think that Jordan Belfort is the hero of The Wolf of Wall Street, let me suggest that you need to watch the movie again or read both his books. He's not the hero, he's the villain. He even admits that he's the villain in his own books. He does a really clever thing, which is that he manages to write in such a way that you're kind of on his side, you kind of empathize with him even while he's telling you that he's the bad guy. Cleverly done, real piece of little artistic um, wriggle room is created for himself. He was a criminal. He was doing what's called a pump and dump. And what he would do is um, he would contact people, um, rich people, because poor people couldn't buy stock. He'd contact, or eventually a few hundred people, would contact people who had experience in the stock market, they would go through the sales pitch and get them to buy a blue stock, uh, an IBM, a blue chip, sorry, an IBM, a Microsoft, uh, whatever. And then they would introduce them to the pump and dump, which was companies that were essentially worthless, that, that either didn't exist other than on paper or were never gonna go anywhere. And he'd get people to buy chunks of those because the commission on those was so high. He could sell them for $5 and keep $4.50 of that. So the commissions were enormous. Um, alternatively, what he was then scaling up to was doing his, his own IPOs, initial uh, public offerings, where he would put the stock out to the public and pump the price up by driving the volume up and then sell the shares that he and his friends owned and take the difference in the profit. So if the company was actually worth $10 a share, they'd sell and sell and sell and sell and sell until the price went up and then they'd dump it and take the difference between what they sold at and what everybody else was lumbered with as their profits. Now, let me explain just in terms of business why no recruitment firm could ever do that. The equivalent is getting a candidate, putting them out with a totally fictitious CV and references that are actually somebody in the office answering the phones or answering the emails, put them out, they get a job, you get your fees, they sit there for a couple of months and then they quit to go to another job 
that you found for them using the fictitious CVs and the fictitious references. And then they sit there until you get paid and then they go to another job. Now, obviously unethical, borderline illegal, but certainly unethical. Um, and you know, if, you're, if there's one of you doing that, you, you might get away with it for a few months, maybe, I doubt it, but you might. Um, but you can't grow a firm like that because you'd have to have thousands of dodgy CVs and dodgy candidates going out and being paid to take jobs and it's just an insanity. So the business concept, nonsensical in terms of recruitment. The cultural aspects, mm, well, okay, um, mid 90s. Yeah, tech recruitment in London in the mid 90s was a little bit, a little bit, yeah, okay. Um, you know, I, I, I did work with companies who were banned from entire hotel chains because they, of what they'd done to the hotels during their co annual conferences. Um, my particular favorite was the one where the um, senior managers paid a plumber to come into a hotel and re-plumb the um, managing director's bathroom so that the toilet and the bidet would only supply boiling hot water. Now, there's no hospitalization involved and it did cost them 20 grand to repair the hotel, but you know, that's the sort of thing. And, um, you know, did I go attend conferences and do presentations at conferences, which then turned into some kind of event that Caligula would have been ashamed to show his face at? Uh, yeah, you know, um, but it wasn't organized and deliberate. <laughs> you know, there, there was the, the directors weren't hiring um, ladies and gentlemen of negotiable pleasure to come in and attend the event. Or, you know, there was no bowls of substances in the conference rooms and stuff. No, no, I met a lot of um, very wild and enthusiastic people. And, uh, you know, it was a little bit, it didn't last long, probably three or four years, and it was a bit wild, but like The Wolf of Wall Street? No. And by the way, if you only ever watch the movie, that's the, that's the sanitized version. Read the books. Wow. Um, but that whole back and alien debauch, nah. Nah, not even in the mid 90s, in central London, no. It, it, you, you can't function and do business in that way. So the business model won't work and the culture never existed and never will exist. And you've also got to bear in mind that what you read in the books and what you see in the film if you put aside the entire business being based on fraud, an awful lot of stuff that goes on in the offices is illegal. You know, it is illegal to reward staff with um, sexual favours. There's all sorts of things that are plain balls out illegal. Well, hang on, how did he get away with it for so long? Um, well, simple, actually. Um, the offices were in New Jersey, and the New Jersey police and the New Jersey Sheriff's Department were let's not say they were in the payoff. Let's say they were supported by the Gambino crime family. And Jordan Belfort and the Wolf of Wall Street, the, the whole um, firm that he was running, was not collaborating with, but they were supported by the same Gambino crime family. What was actually happening was that um, the firm that Jordan Belfort was running was explicitly training young men and women from the environment in how to do these pump and dumps and do these cons. And they would then go out and span out across the country doing exactly the same thing in other communities. So you couldn't even run a firm like that unless you had the police in your pocket. And um, whatever you might say about the Metropolitan Police, the Greater Manchester Police, wherever, you ain't gonna get away with that sort of stuff over here. Thank you very much indeed. Think about it for a second. If any major firm in the UK actually did behave like that, I think it would come out fairly quickly. You know, um, there's been some wild times and there's been some outrageous adventures, but that sort of thing on a regular basis? Nah. I'm not gonna teach you to sell like the minions working at Stratton Oakmont for Jordan Belfort, but what I can do is down in the description, give you a link to a free download of the 20 most essential sales skills that every recruitment professional needs. Help yourself. And what I would say is 
If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell and like. But most importantly, if you've got any questions and you want to ask me stuff about either sales, recruitment, or alternatively, what went on in the 90s, feel free to comment down there and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can do. Or alternatively, you can um, follow me on Instagram or connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll get back to you through the DMs that way. Enjoy and I'll see you again soon.